Joining me now is retired General David Petraeus, former CIA director and former commander of U.S. Central Command. He's also the author of the new book, Conflict, the Evolution of Warfare from 1945 to Ukraine. General, thank you so much for joining us here on Meet the Press Now. You know, the White House and President Biden over the last few days has really been urging the Israelis not to make the same mistakes that the U.S. made after 9-11. You, of course, uh, oversaw coalition forces in Iraq. Do you agree with the president? Uh, I do. Uh, we made mistakes in not having sufficiently planned the post-conflict phase. I was a two-star general at that time, actually. It wasn't until 2007, 2008 that I commanded the surge as a four-star. But clearly, we got to Baghdad, we toppled the regime, and our plans were not sufficient. Uh, and when we then compounded that situation by taking two policy decisions that were very, very uh, destructive, frankly, that was to fire the Iraqi military without telling them what their future was, uh, and devathification without an agreed reconciliation process, which put tens of thousands of bureaucrats we needed to run uh, Iraq uh, into retirement, essentially fire them. Uh, so clearly he's urging them to plan what will happen the day after the so-called post-conflict phase. I tend to agree that it's inescapable that Hamas has to be destroyed. These are irreconcilable. They are extremists. They are terrorists. They can't be negotiated with their founding documents, call for the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews. It's going to be a very, very tough campaign. And when it's done, and it will take a long time to do it, it'll be costly, it'll be destructive. Uh, but when it is done, there needs to be a plan for what comes next. And there also should be a vision announced in advance of what life will be like for the Palestinians in uh, Gaza and also in the West Bank uh, after the destruction of Hamas and their terrorist uh, partners, the Islamic Jihad. But General, besides the long-term plans, there's also the short-term plans. We keep hearing about this expected ground offensive. How would it compare to what the U.S. saw in Iraq? Is the IDF ready for that type of you know, ground incursion into such a difficult place like Gaza? How does it compare to what the U.S. saw in Iraq? It's vastly more difficult than anything we did in Iraq. And we cleared major cities uh, during our time, especially during the surge, cities like Ramadi, Fallujah, again, for the third and final time, parts of Baghdad, Mosul, a city of over a million people. And Mosul had to be re-cleared, of course, when it became the capital of the Islamic State's caliphate in northern Iraq. Uh, this is much, much more difficult. Of course, an enemy that doesn't wear uniforms, that uses civilians as shields. There are 212 hostages that they use as well, 300 miles uh, the so-called Gaza City Metro uh, that they have developed. Uh, they'll, they're individuals that will blow themselves up to take Israelis with them, improvise explosive devices. And the requirement, essentially, to clear every building, every floor, room, cellar, tunnel, uh, and then to leave forces behind so that the enemy cannot re-infiltrate. You just have to do that progressively. I see no alternative. You can't do this with commando raids or special operations, targeted operations. This is a very large force that is going to have to be rooted out. And again, I just see no alternative unless it's incomplete, in which case they will come back, just has been the case after each time that Israel has carried out the so-called mowing of the, the, the grass uh, option. Yeah. That's not an option here, but they need to understand that if the Palestinian people reject Hamas over time, at least don't help them uh, during this period of these clearance operations, as challenging as they will be, that life will be better for them, and that what comes and after that, the post-conflict phase will see to their needs the restoration of basic services and the rest of that, and ensuring that Hamas and Islamic Jihad cannot reconstitute. Well, General, I don't want to press you on that point. Is it possible to root out Hamas here? And, and also, what are the optics here for Israel? How can it continue to maintain international support? So there's two questions. Is it possible to root sure. out Hamas? And then how does Israel maintain that support internationally? I think it is possible, but it, it remains to be seen. Again, there's nothing more difficult than urban operations, and this is the most challenging urban operation imaginable. You mentioned the book, Conflict. Uh, my co-author, Andrew Roberts, and I mm -hmm. thought back through all those cases. There's no more challenging context than this one uh, in this particular scenario. Uh, but Israel's carrying out the shaping operations right now. Yes, there's going to be destruction. There is already. Yes, there will be innocent civilian lives, and they need to be laid mm -hmm. at the feet of Hamas. Hamas brought this on with the brutal, horrific, unspeakable acts 
of 10-7, and they are to blame for what is now uh, in being inflicted and, uh, on Hamas and tragically on the Palestinian people as and, well. And, General, briefly, uh, earlier this week, the French President Macron, he suggested that the international coalition fighting ISIS should be expanded to include the fight against Hamas. Is that something that should be considered? I don't think the Israelis want that. Uh, I think the Israelis want to deal with them themselves. Uh, they understand how to do this. They understand the challenge. They knew de do need to carry out further setting of the conditions, operations, posturing their forces, positioning them. But I think they want to do this themselves. They don't need to involve others. This is their operation. The challenge is really the post-conflict phase. Who will take that over? Will Israel be forced to reoccupy Gaza? Could this now be the time that the Arab communities that express concern for the Palestinians step up and contribute in a meaningful way to this? Noting that, again, mm -hmm. the challenge for the, the administration that follows is not just going to be handing out uh, humanitarian assistance and restoring basic yeah. services. They are going to have to keep Hamas and Islamic Jihad remnants from reconstituting. General David Petraeus, thank you so much for joining us here on Meet the Press Now. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.